Rightio, oh, here's an even uh, more complicated uh, simplifying uh, uh, fractions question involving thirds, but we don't panic. We follow exactly the pattern that we laid out before. We look and we see that we've got fractions that have got a, the thirds in the denominator. I don't care how complicated the numerator is. I don't care that there's other thirds in the numerator. I see a third in the denominator and I think to myself, I've got to rationalize. So uh, I just follow the normal procedure for rationalizing where I multiply above and below by the third on the bottom so that I can get rid of it. So here we go, let's, let's start to set that up. There's two fractions, so I've got to do the same in, in both. Uh, for the first fraction, I need to multiply above and below by root five. And for the second fraction, I need to multiply above and below by root three. So let's do that right now. So for the first fraction, I've got 10 root six over three root five, and I multiply by root five over root five. For the second fraction, I've got four root two over three root three, and I multiply above and below by root three over root three, okay? So now, don't worry about how complicated it looks one step at a time, okay? Uh, you know, these are, in the old days, they used to ask the question, how do you eat a Jeep? One mouthful at a time, it's exactly the same. We're just eating a Jeep. It doesn't matter how, how hard the problem looks, we can only do it one mouthful at a time. So let's have a look. I've got 10 root six times root five, well, when I'm multiplying thirds, I multiply the coefficients. So there's a 10 there and there's a 1 there. So 10 times 1 is 10. And then here, root 6 times root 5, the parts underneath the radicals on the parts inside the third, they get multiplied together as well. So that's 6 times 5 is 30. And on the bottom, I've got 3 root 5 times root 5. Well, root 5 times root 5 is just 5, so it's 3 times 5. Moving on to the second fraction, I've got 4 root 2 times root 3. Well, again, root 2 times root 3 is root 6, so I've got 4 root 6. On the bottom, I've got 3 root 3 times root 3. Well, root 3 times root 3 is 3, so I've got 3 times 3. Okay, so... Let's keep on going, we'll simplify a bit more. So I've got uh, three times five on the bottom here, or I can actually simplify here before I do that. Um, oh no, I won't. So three times five is 15, so I've got 10 root 30 over 15, plus over here I've got uh, three times three is nine, so four root six over nine. Now look at this, I've got a 10 over 15. I can simplify 10 over 15. 10 over 15 is two over three. So here I've got two root 30 over three plus four root six over nine. Now, uh, I see the root 30 and I think to myself, square numbers, square numbers, square numbers. Are there any square numbers that go into 30? Well, remember what the square numbers were. So 2 squared was 4, 3 squared was 9, 4 squared was 16, 5 squared is 25. None of these numbers go evenly into 30. So I can't simplify the root 30 there. Okay. Same deal, none of these numbers go into 6. I can't simplify the root 6. What I can do is I can get a common denominator between these two fractions. Okay, If I multiply this fraction by 3 on 3, uh, then I'll, I'll get a 9 in my denominator, and then I can add these fractions. So let me just uh, shimmy the paper up just a tiny bit. So I've got... Uh, I'm going to multiply above and below by 3. So uh, multiplying 2 by 3, I'll get 6 root 30 over 9 plus, uh, sorry, 4 root 6 
over 9. Well, that gives me 6 root 30 plus 4 root 6 over 9. Again, I'll just have to shift the paper up a little. Okay, and there's nothing more I can simplify there. I might be able to factorise a 2 or factorise a 2 root 6 even. Um, but for now, I think that that's enough. I'll, I'll actually, I'll show that next step. Uh, but were I to see our original question in an exam, this would probably get full marks. If I, uh, maybe if I had a question like this um, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in a higher level of math, I might be looking for another step yet where I say, well, when I look at uh, root 30 and root 6, I see that they've both got a root 6 in common. So I can take a root 6 out. When I look at 6 and 4, well, they've both got a 2 in common. So I can take a 2 out. If I take a 2 out of 6, I'm left with 3. And if I take a, a 6 out of 30, I'm left with 5. Okay, if I take a 2 out of 4, I'm left with 2. And if I take a root 6 out of root 6, I'm left with 1. So there's nothing more there. And I've still got my 9 in the bottom. So look, this this next step here, uh, probably a little bit more than what our, I mean, you know, uh, I'd say it's, 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 a, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a lot more than our course uh, would ask of you at this stage. So if you can understand up to this point here, I think you're doing really, really well. Uh, and that's that's great. Look, I hope that's helped. Um, you might have to go through the video a little bit slower just to see exactly what's going on. But look, keep up the good work. Any questions, as usual, uh, shoot me a, a, a question in the comments below. Uh, get over to me on, um, uh, on our Microsoft Teams page or send me an email. I'll be more than happy to help. Good on you. Keep on working hard.